Hey guys, welcome back to the Turbo V6 YouTube channel. In this episode, I'll be machining a throttle body adapter for the Firebird so we can go from the stock 3800 Series 2 drive-by wire throttle body to a 4-bolt LS style 92mm drive-by cable throttle body. And we'll be doing all of that on my little desktop CNC. We also upgraded that, so I'll go over some of the upgrades that I did and uh, yeah, show you how the machining process goes. So if you saw my last video, you'll remember this little 3D printed part. It adapts between the uh, stock, you know, 3800 uh, Firebird Camaro uh, intake manifold to a 4-bolt 92mm uh, throttle body that I have on the truck. So I already test fit it on the uh, Firebird. Looks like everything is going to be good to go. So now I just have to uh, take it from plastic and make it out of metal. And I've already machined some other stuff on the little, you know, CNC mini mill. One thing I actually did on the CNC previously, uh, and I think I did a video on this, was this little throttle cable bracket, uh, you know, adapter to go from the modified, uh, you know, V8 intake that I cut down. Uh, it goes from that Edelbrock, you know, mount to the stock S10 um, throttle cable. Just clips right in there, you know, perfect fit, worked great. I've used it for, you know, quite a while now and no issues with that. Uh, turned out pretty decent, definitely some, you know, minor defects in it. Um, but I, I really thought that the CNC needed some upgrades after that, but I just wasn't ready to do it at that time. And I took the time now to actually get it done on both the X and the Y. I took out these old lead screws, which uh, I'm not actually sure what thread that is you know, a steel rod, and then, so this was the original, you know, piece that that uh, threaded into, just another piece of steel, so steel on steel, so sometimes I would wind up getting one of the axes, if I tried to go travel too fast, it would bind up, uh, you know, there's no feedback, I would wind, be, wind up losing position, and then, you know, totally screw up the part, potentially. So, uh, I actually upgraded to some very inexpensive ball screws, uh, I'll link, you know, what I bought in the description below, but uh, I also 3D printed um, these adapters to be able to go from the mini mill to a, um, you know, the kit that came with the ball screw. This is basically the, the bearing support, and then I used to make it a little motor mount, and these I printed out of ABS on my printer, my little 3D printer. Uh, and yeah, so uh, it seems to be moving all right. I've got it, you know, move, moving for quite a while, but I haven't cut anything serious. So this will be the first real part that I wind up machining on here with these new upgraded, you know, X and Y axis ball screws. Uh, the one big uh, advantage is I'm able to travel a lot faster. Before, I could really only move X and Y at like 30 inches a minute, which really you know, caused it to take a really long time to wind up machining. I could adjust the backlash, but, you know, the tighter I went on these, the more it would wind up jamming up and then I'd screw up. So I had to have these fairly loose. The backlash was probably like close to, you know, eight or ten thousandths uh, in X and Y. So that did not help out, you know, the surface finish very much. But with the Z-axis, and you can see it still has the old school, you know, threaded rod with into a piece of steel. So um, that's another thing I could upgrade in the future. Um, but with this thing just sitting, I could not hold my hand on this motor. And I think what I think happened is that this motor is rated for only like 2.2 like two amps or something. Whereas these motors are rated for like 2.8 amps. And I'm pretty sure the CNC board, which is a, a gecko board down here, um, is set up to run close to what these motors are rated for, which is like 2.8 amps. So 
I think this was putting over, you know, too much current through this motor than what it should have been rated for. And uh, so I just wound up buying another motor that was the same or similar specs to this. This is obviously a super cheap motor, uh, but we'll see if it works. And then if you aren't familiar with my CNC, this is a uh, treadmill motor. It's a DC motor that's like 130 volts, um, 6,600 RPM. So I, I run this at like, in the motor I run at 5,000 RPM usually, especially if we're cutting aluminum. And it has a um, basically a um, 2.0, you know, gear, gear um, up. So it winds up running a spindle at double the RPM of the motor. So I wind up running a spindle speed of 10,000 RPM. And that's a two horsepower motor. It's decent. It's probably way overkill for, you know, this frame. There is not a whole lot of rigidity in this little mini mill. So I have to take fairly small cuts, but it turns out decent. And I'm hoping with these X and Y ball screws, it'll turn out even better. So that's pretty much all the upgrades for the mini mill. And I didn't record any of that, but I thought I'd just go over it really quick. And yeah, so now we'll get into trying to do some test cuts, seeing if I need to tweak my recipe. Um, Want to try and get a little bit better surface finish. So I might play around with the feeds and speeds a little bit just to see if I can get something a little bit better. Well, to make a long story short, I made a huge mess. And uh, yeah, I don't really think the uh, three flute bits are worth it because uh, they kept getting clogged up. So chip evacuation is a real problem. So I'm going to wind up probably sticking with this uh, single flute end mill. And uh, yeah. We'll just uh, go ahead and start cutting out the throttle body adapter. So we'll get this material set up in the in the mill and uh, start cutting. All right. Well, I got my aluminum in, zeroed out. Got my first operation on the you know Mach three ready to go, and we'll get uh, get going. See if we can get this done. Okay, well, it looks like I got extremely lucky. I'm going to be able to flip the part and mill around those two holes that I made. And the reason I did that incorrectly was because I accidentally selected the stock origin as the stock box point instead of the model box point which offset because I just picked a random stock size. Um, I didn't try and place it in the stock like I was going to machine it. And really I wanted this edge and this edge so that I could use my 3D print part to just get it kind of close enough. So yeah, screwed it up in the program. So I'll have to uh, just post-process these uh, um, programs and hopefully be good to go. Wow, would you just look at that? I never expected to get that kind of surface finish. That's beautiful. That's freaking beautiful. Well, I say that turned out pretty good. <laughs> time to uh, change this tool out one more time and uh, we cut in the outside profile.
Well, there's my adapter. It's not perfect. But it looks pretty good. Not too bad. I can clean that up with a file and I already have it marked for all the holes. So we'll just make sure those line up. And we'll be good to go. Alright, well there it is. Only have to do some minor drilling, but you can see there's the 3D printed prototype and the finished part. Okay, well I spent some time over here on the welding table, did some sanding, might do a little bit more. Uh, it's not perfect, but you can see I've gotten most of the bow out of this material. There was some significant warp or bow, however you want to say it. And uh, there's the back side. Again, looking pretty good. I mean, it's probably only a realistically like three or four thou. I'm um, using a straight edge that I could get under any one of these, you know, points. But um, it's probably good enough to seal at this point. I also uh, drilled and tapped that hole, uh, countersunk, and then dr drilled these holes out. So it does mount up to the uh, factory, you know, 3800 Firebird intake manifold. But the only thing left was to uh, figure out, um, you know, what I was going to do for these holes to mount the um, LS throttle body, which just came in right now, and I'm going to be modifying this slightly. All right, well, I have the throttle body basically 100% disassembled. Uh, it's quite simple. The only thing that's uh, really left in there are the two bearings, which are fine. I'm not going to remove those. Uh, I might actually put you know, a couple drops of oil or something on there, but eh, probably not a huge deal. But I'll go ahead and show you why um, these things are not sealed the way they come. Um, basically, there's a couple spots where obviously air can get out. This one is where this was connected, which I'm just going to tap and, um, you know, put a plug in there. So that's kind of not relevant. And then there's the idle air control ports. So that's where air comes in before the throttle body and comes out after the throttle body and then that's where the idle air motor goes in and that has a gasket so that's not going to leak or shouldn't leak uh, we'll see if this actually leaks this cheapo one and then uh, really the only other holes are for the bearings and this side is sealed with gasket on the tps sensor which um, this actually might leak but um, hard to say we'll, we'll find out and make sure it works and then the other side where the actual, uh, you know, quadrant or cam to the throttle um, cable goes. And that side is just uh, an open bearing. Um, the shaft basically is the only thing that's, you know, sealing it. That is not a sealed bearing. And like I said before, it looks like there's a spot for a seal, uh, a shaft seal, but it's just not there. And I found on uh, Amazon a relatively inexpensive seal that uh, I purchased and put on the throttle body on the truck. But yeah, just uh, cleaning up all the sharp edges. Uh, I noticed on the truck throttle body when I was using it that there was a couple burrs on the aluminum. So I'm just, you know, taking every everything apart. You know, it's a very cheap throttle body. I think it was like $80 on Amazon. So I'm um, just deburring the edges where the throttle blade uh, contacts and I'll probably you know, take the, you know, super sharp edges off of this just slightly with some uh, Scotch-Brite or something just to make sure there's no burr. And then uh, obviously I'll, you know, lock tight these screws going back into the shaft to make sure that those don't fall out and go right into the engine. That would be bad. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much all there is to a cheap LS throttle body. And uh, hopefully I'll get um, my seal in tomorrow and be able to show you guys uh, what you need to make these things uh, basically leak-proof, you know, uh, no more boost leaks. Oh, and uh, I also wrapped up the uh, drilling and tapping for the holes now that I have the throttle body. And yeah, it's uh, turned out great. It's all done. So another project off of the list. Okay, so I got my seals in. I just bought a couple of them just in case I have backup. 
Um, they're pretty cheap. I'll put a link in the description and I'll just drop the part number below. I just got them off of Amazon. Um, they actually drop shipped straight from the manufacturer. So now I'm, I've got everything cleaned up. Just hit everything with like some sandpaper and a file just to uh, knock all the sharp edges off. Um, not sure the only thing that I didn't do, which I really don't know if, I, if I'll be able to solve this, but sometimes when this throttle body um, on the truck is closed a lot, has like some kind of whistle and I'm assuming it's from the idle air control port or I don't know if it's from the gap around the throttle blade it just like whistles and it's like really annoying I just basically adjusted the uh the throttle stop so that you know it just quit doing that still does it every once in a while but definitely not as often um, but I might just try and hit these with the file as well just to knock the sharp edge off and then, yeah, we can just put this thing together and it'll be done. All right, well, there's the finished throttle body and adapter. Got everything good to go. So I got my uh, seal in there installed. Just had to push that in. Got all the, everything deburred. I uh, got the, you know, TPS and the idle air control motor in there. Uh, now, really, the only thing that's left to do is uh, cut some gaskets eventually when I'm ready to fire this thing up for the first time. And then eventually I'll also need to uh, figure out something to do with, uh, you know, throttle body cable bracket and uh, and the cable. Because this thing was drive-by-wire, I'll have to figure that out. So that's it on the next project. If you like what you see, be sure to hit that subscri subscribe button. Give me a like. Shoot me a comment what you want to see, what you like, what you don't like. And uh, yeah, we'll see you later.